ever wondered how to get the perfect balance between a pleasing background blur and proper exposure in portrait photography? Well, you're not alone. The magic of portrait photography lies in this delicate balance, and achieving it manually can be quite a task. That's where understanding your camera settings comes in. In the realm of photography, knowledge is indeed power. The more you understand about your camera and its settings, the better equipped you are to capture stunning portraits. And that's exactly what we're going to delve into today. The intricate world of manual camera settings. Imagine having complete control over every aspect of your photo. The lighting, the focus, the depth of field, and even the color representation sounds like a photographer's dream, right? Well, that's what manual mode offers you. In manual mode, you get to call the shots quite literally. Next up is ISO, which is all about light sensitivity. A lower ISO in good lighting conditions can result in less noise, lending a crisp clarity to your portraits. Then comes the aperture. A wide aperture can help you achieve that much coveted shallow depth of field, isolating your subject from the background and giving you that beautiful bokeh effect. Shutter speed plays a crucial role too. It helps prevent motion blur, ensuring your subject is captured sharply. White balance is another key player. It helps ensure accurate color representation, adding authenticity to your portraits. The focus mode can make or break your portrait, ensuring precise focus on your subject. Metering mode is a bit like the conductor of an orchestra, evaluating the entire scene for proper exposure. And finally, lens choice. A prime lens with a wide aperture can give you optimal results in portrait photography. And that's just the tip of the iceberg. Each of these settings has its own nuances and understanding them can truly elevate your portrait photography. Are you ready to dive in? All set to unlock the secrets of manual settings for the perfect portrait. The path to stunning portraits is paved with knowledge and we are here to guide you every step of the way. First up on our list is understanding the manual mode and ISO. When it comes to capturing the perfect portrait, taking control of your camera settings is crucial. This is where manual mode comes into play. By switching your camera to manual mode, you gain complete control over the exposure settings, allowing you to adjust the aperture, shutter speed and ISO independently. This mode is a game changer as it lets you make precise adjustments to achieve the desired effect in your portraits. Now, let's talk about ISO. The ISO setting on your camera has a direct impact on the exposure and overall quality of your image. It controls the sensitivity of your camera's sensor to light. A lower ISO, such as 100, means less sensitivity to light, but also less noise, resulting in cleaner, more detailed images. This is great for conditions where there's plenty of light. However, what do you do when you're shooting in a low light environment? That's where you can bump up the ISO. Increasing the ISO to say 400 makes your camera's sensor more sensitive to light, thereby brightening the image. But remember, a higher ISO also introduces more noise or grain into your image. So it's a balancing act. You need to adjust the ISO based on the lighting conditions while keeping an eye on the noise levels to ensure the best possible image quality. Think of ISO as a dial you can turn to adjust the brightness of your photo, but with the caveat that turning it too high might reduce the image quality. The key is to start with the lowest ISO setting and gradually increase it only if you need more light, keeping the noise levels in check. So to sum up, manual mode gives you the reins allowing you to control how your camera captures light, while the ISO setting helps you balance the exposure and image quality based on the available light. Remember, mastering manual mode and ISO settings is your first step towards capturing that perfect portrait. Now, let's talk about aperture and shutter speed. Aperture, represented by the term f-stop, plays a significant role in determining how much light enters your camera. A lower f-stop, such as f2.8, signifies a wider aperture, letting in more light. This wider aperture also creates a shallower depth of field, which means your subject is in sharp focus while the background becomes a pleasing blur, also known as bokeh. 
This effect is particularly desirable in portrait photography as it helps to isolate your subject from the background, drawing the viewer's attention to the person you're photographing. On the other hand, a higher f-stop like f5.6 narrows the aperture, allowing less light to hit the sensor but increasing the depth of field. This means more elements in your image will be in focus. So, in essence, by adjusting the aperture, you can control how much of your scene remains sharp and how much becomes a beautiful blur. Now, onto shutter speed. In the simplest terms, shutter speed is the length of time your camera's shutter remains open. It's a crucial factor in preventing motion blur and ensuring a sharp image. For portrait photography, a speed between 1 100 and 25th of a second to 1 250th of a second is a good starting point. This range is fast enough to freeze most human motion, ensuring your subject remains sharp. However, if your subject is particularly animated or you're capturing a moment with more movement, you might need to opt for a faster shutter speed to freeze the action. Conversely, if you're shooting in low light, a slower shutter speed can let in more light. But be aware this increases the risk of motion blur. In essence, shutter speed is a balancing act. You want it fast enough to prevent blur, but slow enough to allow adequate light. With the right aperture and shutter speed, you're well on your way to creating a stunning portrait. Next, we move on to white balance, focus mode, and metering mode. White balance, although often overlooked, is a crucial component of photography. It's all about color accuracy. Imagine a snow-capped mountain under a blue sky. Without a proper white balance, the snow might appear bluish, which is not what our eyes see. To avoid such color distortions, you can set your camera to auto white balance, which works well in most lighting conditions. However, for more control, you can manually adjust it based on the lighting conditions. Now, let's shift our focus to, well, focus. The focus mode you choose can make or break your portrait. Single autofocus, also known as AFS, is a great option for portrait photography. Once you press the shutter button halfway, the camera locks the focus on your subject. This ensures a crisp and clear portrait, even if you or your subject slightly move. However, if you prefer more control and have a steady hand, manual focus is your go-to. It allows you to decide what part of the frame remains sharp, giving you creative freedom. Finally, we arrive at metering mode. If you've ever wondered how your camera decides the exposure, you've been thinking about metering. Evaluative or matrix metering is a safe bet for portraits as it considers the entire scene to determine the right exposure. This mode ensures that your subject and the background are well exposed. However, remember, your camera is not always right. If you find your portrait too bright or too dark, don't hesitate to adjust the exposure compensation. These three settings, white balance, focus mode, and metering mode, are like the secret ingredients to a delightful portrait. They ensure accurate color representation, sharp focus, and proper exposure, respectively. Master these and you're one step closer to capturing stunning portraits that make viewers pause and appreciate. By understanding white balance, focus mode and metering mode, you can ensure a well-focused and well-exposed portrait. Finally, let's discuss lens choice and some additional tips for portrait photography. Now, when it comes to lens selection, a prime lens can often be your best ally. Why is that, you may ask? Well, prime lenses such as a 50mm f1.8 offer wide apertures, which are perfect for creating a shallow depth of field. This helps isolate your subject from the background, creating that pleasing bokeh effect we all love. Plus, prime lenses are known for their sharpness, adding a crisp clarity to your portraits that can be quite captivating. Now, let's move on to some vital tips that can elevate your portrait photography. First and foremost, when focusing, always aim for the eyes. The eyes are the windows to the soul, right? So, it's crucial to keep them sharp and in focus. It's where your viewer's eyes will naturally wander and having them in focus can make a big difference in your portrait's impact. Next, be mindful of your background. You want a backdrop that complements your subject without stealing the show. Look for simple, 
uncluttered backgrounds that help your subject stand out. Remember, the background is there to support the story your portrait is telling, not to distract from it. Finally, don't forget to experiment with different angles and poses. Every person is unique, and their portrait should reflect that. Try capturing your subject from various angles, and encourage them to try different poses. This can help reveal their personality, adding depth and authenticity to your portraits. Remember, these settings and tips are a starting point. Don't hesitate to experiment and find your unique style in portrait photography. Photography is an art, and like any art form, it's about expressing your vision. So, take these tips, get out there, and start capturing some stunning portraits. And most importantly, have fun while doing it.